So now let's take a look at you know the different mode and privilege that the M Glass CPU can operate in. And let me kind of you know pull up the white or blackboard here. So again, we think of the CPU as a bunch of registers, right? That's like non-negotiable. That's the model we have been following. Now I what I want you to imagine is another kind of you know an overlay on top of this, like another layer on top of it. And imagine, oh, let me draw it here. And my claim now is that the CPU can operate in two modes. One is called the handler mode. Right? One is called the handler mode. Uh, the other one is called the thread mode. Right? And what does it mean? So your computation related things like your pluses, minuses, all of that, the usual um, you know, actual application code, uh, that will kind of execute usually in the thread mode. Anytime an interrupt happens, the CPU interrupt or exception happens, the CPU automatically uh, moves to the handler mode. That's that's about it, right? Now, the interesting bit is, so this was about the mode, right? Thread mode, handler mode. The interesting bit now is the CPU also kind of the M class uh, architecture kind of also gives us uh, privileges, right? So there are uh, two, you know, varieties within privilege. One is obviously, you know, privilege. The other one is non-privilege. And what does that mean? So privilege means that the code that is executing, if it is executing in the in the privilege, uh, you know, kind of, uh, if it is the privileged code, um, then it can access the control and conf uh, the configuration and the status registers, right? It can access those. But if it is a, uh, like the code is executing in non-privileged scenario, then it cannot access the control and status registers. And this kind of, uh, uh, you know, makes sense because you don't want the application code to go change the configuration of the CPU, right? You wouldn't want to allow that. And now the thing is, the, the handler mode is always privileged, right? In handler mode, you can reach out to any part of the CPU uh, configuration registers. Uh, as part of the thread mode, you, you can be privileged or non-privileged, right? So even in the thread mode, if it is in the, uh, you know, it's privileged, then what will happen is it can reach out to the control and status registers. But if it is, uh, uh, and when I say it, it means that the code can actually go and reach out to those registers, right? You, the programmer, can write some code that can go and, you know, reach the control register, for example. That can happen in the privilege, um, when the CPU is in the privileged state. In the non-privileged state, that is forbidden, right? And if we kind of, you know, come back to this diagram, then we see that in the thread mode, First off, there is thread mode and then there is handler mode. The handler mode is always privileged, right? And then the thread mode can be privileged or unprivileged. And the only way, right, uh, to go, and okay, I should mention this, that when the CPU starts, when the booting, the M class CPU has booted, it starts in the privileged thread mode, not handler mode, but the privileged thread mode. So you can reach out, or you know the code can reach out to the control register here, and in the control register, if we set the privilege bit, uh, if we kind of fiddle with that, then we can push the um, uh, CPU into thread mode, but unprivileged state. And once that happens, uh, you know the only way to come back to the privileged thread mode is to kind of issue a software exception. You know there are ways to issue an exception. And from there, kind of, you know, go toggle uh, the control, the bits within the control register and come back to privileged thread mode. That's one way to do it. Or we can come back to the unprivileged thread mode. Now you have to keep in mind that the unprivileged thread mode is for the application code. You want to safeguard the control register from the application and that's why the unprivileged thread mode exists, right? So here you can see if we are in the privileged mode, we can you know take an exception, go to handler mode, and then come back after exit from that exception to the privileged mode, or privileged thread mode. 
And so this is pretty much it. You know, thread, thread mode unprivileged, thread mode privileged, handler mode is always privileged. Now, one other thing that I should mention is that when the CPU starts off, and again, you know, in the next video, we'll take a look at how the CPU boots up. Uh, but when the CPU starts, it starts in thread mode, yes. Uh, but then the stack pointer that it is using is called the MSP, right? Um, so, and in the handler mode and in the privileged thread mode, we start off with MSP. Uh, in the privileged thread mode, we can change the stack pointer to be PSP, right? So now what will happen is the un when we move to unprivileged thread mode, um, the PSP would be used. Right? And now what happens is anytime an exception happens and we go to the handler mode, the handler mode always uses MSP. So that's the idea. And in the previous video, we talked about like, you know, the R13 pointing to either PSP or MSP. So the idea there is when, let's say we started off in privileged thread mode, we were having MSP. So R13 was, you know, using the value that is in that shadow register MSP, um, you know, behind the scenes. And let's say we changed the stack pointer to use PSP, then R13 will point to the value that PSP has. PSP again is a shadow register behind the scene pointing to memory area to be used as stack. And then let's say we change our mode to unprivileged thread mode, right? So this is now pointing to PSP. And let's say an exception happened, an interrupt happened, then we go back to the handler mode and automatically R13 now is pointing to MSP. So why have PSP and, uh, uh, PSP and MSP? The reasoning is this, let's say you are in the unprivileged thread mode and you know, you're populating values on the stack. The stack is, you know, growing, 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 or the stack is growing, 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 and you hit the limit of the memory, right? So what will happen, and I should mention one more thing, that the stack grows downwards. So let's say PSP was pointing here in the memory. So this is memory. And let's say the MSP was pointing here, right? So MSP has like at least this much room to grow down, right? But the PSP has only this much room, right? Until it, let's say, hits the some address, some low address, A, B, C, D, right? So now what will happen is, let's say, if there was some bus fault that happened or some memory fault that happened because the, pro, the, the stack is full, then automatically the CPU will move in the handler mode. But now in handler mode, it needs a stack to do its local computation. And it cannot use this stack because, because, well, you know, that's already exhausted. So we have this MSP, which gives the handlers the room uh, to, you know, to the room to put their local computations on, right? Whatever it's doing in the CPU registers, if it wants to, it can store on a stack and that stack is PSP. So that is why roughly that's like the, you know, uh, the one of the key reasons why we have PSP and MSP. Right. So hopefully you're convinced with the idea of, you know, modes and privileges. And in the next video, let's talk about how the CPU boots up. And then followed by that, uh, let me kind of, you know, show you the internal registers of the M-Class controller. And let's, you know, move forward from there.